Hi, and welcome back to Pixel Pia Creative AI. Today, we're diving into something really important for anyone working with Midjourney. How to organize your images on the web. If you've been using Midjourney for a while, you probably noticed that your images can pile up fast. And without a good organization system, it can get overwhelming. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to organize everything from folders to smart folders, and even how to use your prompt as a way of tagging images for easier searching. So let's get started. First things first, let's talk about how to access the organization tools. When you log in to Midjourney's website, head to the Organize page. You find it here in the left hand side. We are going to go through this from the right hand panel and we're going to start by looking at View Options. Here. If you click on that little arrow, you can see you can choose layout square, which would show all your images as squares, whether they are or not, or you can choose full. And in this case, the nine by 16 or 16 by nine is shown in the right format. You can also choose if you want large, medium, and small images. I usually have it on media. So that's the view options. Then we have filters and this has a lot you can do. You can choose to just show images you have liked, which is very important when you create images. If you have something you really need to find easily, like it. And you can go in here and find it on the left. Unrated, which in my case is all my images. I never submit them for to be rated. Or hidden images, which also is a lot in my case. Because I prefer to hide everything that's not up to par. You can also combine all these. Then we have type. You can show the grids. Or you can choose to show just the upscaled images you have. Image size, you can choose to show all your square images, all your landscape images, or all your portrait images. Or maybe you are looking for portraits and landscape, then it will show both. And then you can choose version, version 6 is what I have worked in lately, but you can also show all older, for example, version 5, and depending on how long you have worked in Midjourney, you can even show version 4. I don't think I have anything in 3201. And then you have under other, you can show tiled images. This is a repetitive pattern I have created. Or you can choose to show all your raw images. Before we take a look at folders and how we create them, I want to point out the search bar. Right now we are in all images on the folder and that is what usually is default, unless you go in and look for a specific folder. So let's say I want to find all the images I have done that has purple in their prompt and here we have some old ones these are from april 23 december 23 and june 24 and if i click on one of them you see a photo of a young woman standing in the rain with a purple umbrella or if i search for everything that has to do with panda it will show all images i have that has a panda in them so the search fun function is always a good way to find images if you have a sense of what wording you used in your prompt. 
and more about prompts later on. Let's talk about creating and managing folders. As you see here, I have a lot of folders and all these starting with MG, it stands for Mid Journey, are the images I created for every episode I have made in this series. How do I create a folder? Well, at the bottom here of folders, we have create folder. And let's say I want to have a folder with all robots. I put robots, robots in here. And we coming back to the smart folder and create that folder. Now I'm going to go up to all images and search for robot. And as you can see, I have a lot of images here with robot. I can do either grab and drag them in there. Now you see that image is there, but there is another way. Under next to the date here, I have select all and I can select all in all the dates I have here with robots. So I'm just scrolling down, selecting all, and that was the end of it. Now I just grab one of them and drag it into robots. Let's take the search term away. And you see under all images, they are still here, the robots, as well as in my robots folder. These, for example, this one, should right now be in two of my folders. It should be in robots, which it is, and it should also be in my AI takeover folder because that's where these were created for. That's my podcast. So that is the easiest way to move images into your folder. But I suggest that you do this after each session, because if you have a lot of images, it will take you quite some time. Now let's create a smart folder. So we click smart folder. And let's say I have a project for that has to do with horses in any way. I put in search terms here, horse, comma, pony, comma, stallion. Let's go for those three right now. Create folder. Now we're going to go to my create page. Black stallion in a photorealistic style. So here we have the black stallion. Let's make another one. A small cute pony in anime style. A horde of wild horses storming through water. So now let's go to our organized space and you see here after horses we have this little is it a star word? Yeah it's a little star. So let's click on that. So here we have all the images I did, did today. I have others with horses. I don't know why this is here. Oh, ponytail. That came in from ponytail. <laughs> and why did this end up in there? Long hair ponytail again. So what I can do, I don't want these in here. So I select those and hide them. But if I'm starting a new project, I where I know there are certain words I will always use. I would start a smart folder. I can also delete the folder by clicking on the three little dots and just choose delete folder. My images are still here in under all images, but the folder itself is has disappeared. So here is something important. Midjourney doesn't have a dedicated tagging system. I can't go in and 
tag my images with a specific word. But there is a workaround. You can essentially tag your images by using descriptive keywords in your prompts. Another thing I wanted to show you under folders here, I'm going under two consistent characters. And let's say that I now want to download all of them. I just mark them like this, clicking on the little plus. And here at the bottom, that 70 image, I can choose download. It will download them in, in this case, two zip files, 50 in the first, and then the other 20 in the second zip file. And let's say that I wanted all the images with the two of them. So now I marked all, but by holding my shift down, I can un check the ones where she is by herself. By holding shift, I can also go in and select individual images. So if I click download here, it's zipping it up in the zip file. And as soon as that is done, I can choose where to save them. Under more here, I can add them to a folder and I just made a folder called couples. So I added them to there. I can unhide images, hide specific images, unlike or like them. So if let's say that I would continue working with this couple, I would hold shift and click those two, go into more and like both of them. So now I know that if I use the filter folders, all images, yes, I go into filter and I choose light. They are in the light folder and I can also find them under couples and I can find them in my folder to consistent characters. So as you see, the same image can be in several folders. Well, I hope this helps you on your creative journey. All right, let's wrap up with some best practices. First, stay consistent with your organization system. The more images you generate, the more important this becomes. If you keep adding folders, creating smart folders, and using descriptive prompts as tags, you'll avoid the chaos of cluttered workspace. Another tip is review and update your folders regularly. As your projects evolve, you might find that some folders are no longer relevant or that you need to create new ones to keep everything organized. And finally, try to organize your images as you go. I know it's tempting to just let them pile up, but trust me, taking a few minutes after each session to organize your new images will save you a lot of time and frustration in the long run. Until next time, keep creating. Bye.